So I'm talking on uh, computer navigation in uh, total mouth philosophy. So just uh, okay. So just quickly, total knee arthroplasty. Uh, total knee, it's a common surgical procedure for knee arthritis and, and other disorders, um, and it's very effective in relieving pain and improving function. Um, and we know it's a, a, a very good procedure, and there's a satisfaction level, a high satisfaction level, anywhere between 80 to 95 percent of uh, people that have the procedure done. Um, between 1990 and 2002, the rate of primary total knees in the US tripled. Um, and over that same period, the uh, total hips only doubled. Um, the amount of total knees each year is uh, increasing, um, and the patient age is decreasing. Um, the just the conventional total knee arthroplasty they're using, such as intra and extra modality jigs for alignments, um, and we'll talk about the um, computer navigator stuff soon, what we use for that. Um, and uh, revision total knee arthroplasty is increasing, and that's due to multiple reasons. Um, the patients are living longer, younger patients are now having uh, arthroplasty done, and uh, patients are now changing their expectations on what they can do after uh, knee replacement. Just quickly on our joint registry, uh, between 1999 and 2011, there were uh, 285,000 patients with over 380,000 knee replacements. Um, there was 9% deaths, 30% um, of people had uh, more than one uh, knee procedure done and the main reason for uh, revisions in our total knee populations was uh, loosening up to 30%, and infection 21% and patellofemoral pain. Um, at 11 years, uh, for all comers, 6.1% uh, needed revision. Um, just uh, quickly, so with the total knees, the designs include obviously constrained and non-constrained. Yeah, non-constrained ones are posterior cruciate retaining and the, the uh, cruciate stabilising. Posterior cruciate uh, retaining seems to on our registry seems to have the best uh, survival, uh, whereas the constrained versions have uh, poorer survival. Um, uh, in regards to the conventional total knee uh, arthroplasty, um, so in this we're talking we're going to be looking at conventional versus um, computer navigated and uh, for working out the alignment of the conventional total knee arthroplasty one of the techniques, I won't go into measured uh, uh, resection um, uh, versus balancing but uh, just one of the techniques is using measured resection and that's using the interoperative uh, identification of bony landmarks and uh, for example um, there's the use of uh, a line parallel to the trans epicondylar axis um, this in itself has issues. Um, so Kinzel uh, and uh, their research uh, found that the uh, epicondyles were only correctly identified within three degrees in 75% of cases, and that there was a wide error from six to uh, degrees of external rotation up to 11 degrees of internal rotation. Um, they also looked at uh, you can use perpendicular to the anterior posterior axis, um, and uh, this also has its issues with 32 degrees range of error. Um, using the anterior posterior axis, um, that's from 15 degrees external rotation to 17 degrees of internal rotation. And the other technique which can be used is uh, the posterior condylar axis and using a 3 to 4 degree external rotation from that. Unfortunately, there's also wide anatomical variations with um, between 1 to 10 degrees of uh, um, compared to the transepicondylar axis. So you might be moving 3 to 4 degrees uh, into external rotation uh, on your jig but still have the knee in internal rotation if there is up to 10 degrees of um, uh, variation there. So obviously with all this you can see that there is the, the chance that uh, your alignment might be off in, in a conventional uh, total knee replacement and so um, that this is one of the, the reasons why the computer navigation system um, was uh, designed and, and brought in. So, as I was saying, some of the issues with the conventional version is um, that even in the best hands of experienced surgeons, only 75% of cases uh, had the mechanical axis within three degrees of neutral. Um, some, although uh, considerable amount of studies show that it's more like 60% rather than 75% um, have uh, the uh, mechanical axis within three degrees. Now, multiple studies have shown that malalignment of the prosthesis can cause 
core knee function uh, with poor patella tracking and uh, re resulted in knee pain. And we saw before just in uh, the Australian Registry that uh, about 9% or 10% of revisions were for uh, knee pain post-operative anterior neck pain. Uh, can lead to acceleration uh, uh, in the wear of the prosthesis, uh, predisposing to component loosening. Um, and some studies showed that the varus and valgus malalignment um, was one of the commonest causes for early loosening. And so it's thought that plus or minus three degrees from neutral, um, uh, being within that is uh, the best alignment to have. And if you go outside of that, that uh, the chance of going on to revision within eight years is increased by up to 25%. Um, we also know that in conventional total knees that uh, hospitals and surgeons who do a lower volume will have a higher rate of complications. And so solutions have been sought to try and work out how we improve this uh, malposition um, and uh, reduce the rate of outliers who sit well outside the, um, the three degrees variation. Just quickly for the registrars and residents here, so when we talk about uh, alignment, so the normal anatomy, the, um, the femur is in about 5 to 7 degrees of uh, uh, valgus, the anatomical axis. Um, and so we're looking to restore the mechanical alignment um, of 0 degrees, and we'll go through what that means in a, min in a minute. We want to restore the joint line, um, have uh, ligamentous balance, and to maintain the Q angle so we get uh, uh, a proper patella tracking and, and avoid mal tracking and anterior knee pain. Um, so, so the mechanical axis of the limb is, is an axis uh, from the centre of the femoral head drawn down through uh, the knee, the middle of the knee, into kind of the uh, part of the knee down through the centre of the ankle. And this here, I'm not sure how well this comes up, but um, the anatomical axis, you can see the femur is this blue line here, and it's as I said about five to seven degrees. It's uh, increased in a uh, valgus knee here and decrease in a varus knee. Um, the mechanical axis is the green line here for the femur, uh, but of the limb is the red line. It should run through the centre of the head, through the centre of the knee, and then down through the centre of the ankle. And you can see it runs lateral uh, in a valgus knee and medial in a varus knee. Um, some of the things that you need to look at when performing a total knee arthroplasty is the femoral alignment. So as I said, the anatomical um, axis of the femur goes through the, medull the uh, medullary canal of the femur. And so this is one of the uh, things that we use for um, uh, the conventional total knee replacement where a, um, an intramedullary rod is put down. Um, the mechanical axis of the, the femur is uh, the line that's drawn through the centre of the head um, uh, and through the intercondylar notch uh, at the knee with this distal femur. And as I was saying earlier, there's a, a, a valgus angle of about 5 to 7 degrees. The anatomical axis of the tibia uh, should be the same as the mechanical axis um, if there's uh, not severe deformity of the tibia. And so the uh, using a intramedullary rod or an extramedullary rod should then go along the mechanical axis, uh, which is normally the anatomical axis of the tibia. You're also looking to preserve the joint line, and so we want to preserve the joint line, um, which will then preserve ligamentous tension, um, and so any bony deformities there need to be corrected. We need to though, avoid elevating uh, the joint line, because um, that will then um, cause other problems with instability, um, patellofemoral cracking. And, uh, uh, lowering the joint, right, joint line also has issues in um, uh, affecting extension and uh, having instability in flexion. So just in the telephone alignment, the Q angle, so that's, that's the uh, angle which is normally around about 11 degrees. And if this angle is affected, then uh, we talk about uh, patella tracking being affected and once again um, anterior knee pain. And the Q angle, just the... Uh, residents is the uh, that's the angle between the axis of the extensor mechanism, so the ASIS um, to the centre of the patella, and then the patella tendon which is the, uh, from the centre of the patella down through the tibial tuberosity. So a change in this will then uh, cause a change in the tracking of the patella, 
And so we want to avoid things like internal rotation of the femoral prosthesis, medialization of the uh, femoral component, and internal rotation of the uh, tibial prosthesis. And so once again, this is just showing the Q angle here, uh, the line drawn down the mechanical axis here and there. Uh, and it's usually about, as I said, 11 degrees. In regards to the telefemoral alignment, the femoral prosthesis, we internal rotation of the femoral prosthesis increases the Q angle, as we said before. So if we internally rotate the femoral prosthesis, um, uh, this will then increase the, the Q angle and uh, also will affect uh, the medial cup and make it tighter in flexion. Medialization of the femoral prosthesis also increases the Q angle. So these are all things which can cause increased stress in the uh, patellofemoral joint and uh, can also lead to anterior knee pain. So just a, a quick illustration here. Um, if you internally rotate the femoral prosthesis, that uh, increases the Q angle. So these are all things that need to be thought about in the conventional uh, and also in the uh, computer navigator. But these are all areas along the way where uh, small areas uh, of malalignment can occur, which can then put you outside the three degrees of um, the accepted um, uh, variation from normal. In the, in the tibial prosthesis, the preferred rotation of the tibial component is uh, neutral, and so that's usually aligned with the medial third of the uh, of the tibial tubercle. Um, you want to avoid internal rotation, especially because um, that results also increasing the uh, Q angle. So here you can just see internal uh, rotation um, will lead to a uh, increase in the Q angle once again, risk of anterior knee pain. Um, in regards to the patellar you want that centralised as uh, much as po uh, possible. Um, Lateralising it will also, uh, in turn, uh, give you a, a increase in the Q angle. Uh, just quickly on uh, balancing. So, um, in a various deformity, you obviously want to do a medial release, and there's lots of uh, uh, people talk about uh, what sort of order you do that in, usually get rid of the osteophytes. Um, and then you can go through, uh, a lot of people do a, a, a subperiosteal release of uh, MCL. Um, uh, and in the valgus deformity, there is, um, you obviously want to try to do a lateral release with um, uh, osteophyte release first and then uh, the uh, lateral capsule. And uh, in the coronal plane, uh, balancing, uh, especially in flexion contracture, you want to get rid of the osteophytes and, uh, and then loosen the uh, posterior capsule. And this, uh, all these uh, areas along the way where you're doing, uh, you're trying to get the alignment uh, as best as possible intraoperatively, um, and so all along the line, you can see there's areas of small deviations that can occur to put you outside to malalign your prosthesis. Um, this is from also bullets, I think it's a, it's a good uh, uh, way of looking at balancing your uh, sagittal plane and so it sort of looks at um, whether you're tight extension or tight inflection and um, I think it's, it's worth something worth looking at, um, especially if you're in uh, intraoperative and you find that you're tight inflection or in extension and gives you a few um, ways to work around. So now looking at, uh, so just back on all that, so we just spoke about all the different areas within the operation that you need to look at to get your alignment and there's all little areas that, that um, can add up to uh, mean that you can get malalignment at the end. So computer navigation was brought in to try and rectify this uh, malalignment. And so uh, it was brought in in 1907. Initially it was used for um, neurosurgical patients. Uh, but then evolved to be used more in, uh, now it's uh, used often in uh, total knee uh, arthroplasty. Uh, it's been found to be of great benefit, especially in those with extra-articular deformities. Um, so the thoughts are that it aims to improve uh, clinical and radio radiological um, uh, parameters by reducing the outliers. We'll talk about that soon. Um, it uses digital mapping. Uh, on standard anatomical landmarks. It looks at the kinematic analysis intraoperatively. Um, there are three types, so, and all use an intraoperative uh, registration of anatomical landmarks. The first one is the uh, basically the volumetric image based system, which is a CT guided one where preoperatively a CT is used. 
Um, that's used more in uh, larger reconstructive type surgery. Unfortunately, with a lot of the research out there now, uh, especially the meta-analysis, it looks at all three types of um, uh, the computer navigation where the majority of uh, navigation used now is the uh, image-free navigation. And this is the one that you'll see used, uh, say, here in uh, our total knees with the, um, the, so the, the striker triathlon, the ASM, and the uh, full nav. And so this makes use of kinematic information about the joints and uh, then can allow you to work out your alignment uh, intraoperatively. The third way is, a, uh, is using fluoroscopy intraoperatively, and that's probably the least uh, used technique. So as I said, unfortunately, a lot of the meta-analyses meta look at all three uh, techniques. There's a couple now that are just solely looking at image-free navigation. And this is just some of the things, the pictures you'll get uh, intraoperatively, and you can uh, help you work out, say, so things like your valgus and various angle and your rotation. So, looking at the literature, the computer-assisted surgery, computer navigation, um, has what would look on the surface to be multiple advantages. Um, if you read separate papers, um, although the literature is very, very contradictory, some patients, some papers will uh, uh, talk about uh, improved uh, alignment, and you'll find that most papers will talk that um, the computer navigation will give improved alignment and will also reduce. Uh, radiographic outliers, especially in the coronal plane, uh, less so in the sagittal plane and even less so in the axial plane. Um, there's some talk about improved flexion extension gaps. Um, a couple of papers talk about improved functional scores, but the majority uh, 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 show no functional improvement at present. Um, some papers talk about uh, total knee uh, after plus your survival um, rate improved. Um, that's more theoretical, though. Um, there hasn't really been anything to show that um, the rate of survival is actually improved. Um, some papers say that there's comparable operative times uh, for experienced users, that costs uh, are acceptable only in high volume centres, and that the uh, learning curves are, are too difficult. Um, other things are there's no difference in mortality. Um, some papers talk about lower cardiac complications, especially versus um, uh, conventional, which uses a intramodality jig. Um, some papers show there's shorter length of stay, less hematomas and less blood loss. So this is when you're looking at the literature as a whole and looking at individual papers. If you go through it, you'll see there's a, a lot of variability. Some of the papers also talk about disadvantages. So the one thing that really does show up is that there's no functional improvement and satisfaction scores are, are, are not changed. Um, and then other thing, other papers talk about the increased cost, all the things like startup, training, maintenance, um, especially in um, additional operating room time. Some papers show that it could take twice as long to do a computer navigator versus a conventional uh, total knee. Um, some showed that uh, the conventional was taking uh, surgeons 55 minutes, but the navigation was adding an extra 60 minutes. Um, other <coughs> issues which have been found, especially in the, the full nav systems where uh, uh, pins are used, say, in, uh, in a, the distal femur or diaphyseal region, um, there can <coughs> be uh, fractures there. Uh, it's only been shown to be about 1%. Um, and some of the risk fractures are female osteoporotic and uh, larger pin diameters. Also, other pin complications such as um, loosening of the pin, so multiple uh, pin insertions, which then have meant that um, in some cases uh, the nab has to be aborted and go onto a conventional. Uh, hematoma around the pin sites, infection, and, and uh, there's been one or two cases which have shown uh, nerve injury. Interestingly, um, we spoke. I spoke about just before this sort of uh, being within three degrees of uh, neutral alignment is uh, having improved outcomes, uh, decreased risk of um, going on and needing early revision. Uh, and the Mayo Clinic brought out a paper in 2010 which has shown that um, the post-operatively mechanical axis between zero and three degrees did not improve survival rates. Um, and there was another article out uh, last year 
which show that, especially in males, but there's a 30% of uh, males have uh, a constitutional varus, and if we went to then align them in the neutral, that uh, we might be uh, altering their ligamentous balance. Interesting in regards to these papers, um, Prof Chung did a paper in 2009 where he found no difference between um, the conventional and computer navigated um, knees. And so what he then did is he then decided he'd look at those who, regardless of whether they're computer navigated or conventional, and he looked at those who uh, were outliers outside of the three degrees and uh, compared them to those that were within uh, three degrees of neutral, regardless of whether they were computer navigated or conventional. They found that uh, if you were within the three degrees, you had improved knee function scores, um, improved satisfaction, improved uh, psychological scores as well. They then re released another paper last year for the five-year follow-up, which showed the same thing. That if you're within the three degrees of neutral, regardless of whether it was a computer navigated or a uh, conventional total um, knee arthroplasty, that the scores for um, functional, um, psychological, and satisfaction continued to be improved at the five-year period. Um, but in his papers, he also found there to be no difference functional scores or satisfaction scores, whether you had computer navigated or um, uh, whether it was conventional, irrespective of it, so, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, so, as I said, the, the uh, literature, which is considerable amounts of articles, is uh, very uh, conflicting and contradictory. So, I had a look at the major meta-analyses, and there's about five or six of those, and two or three um, large systematic reviews to see if we could see um, uh, any trend or anything. So one of the analysis from 2007 was um, uh, Bowens et al. and the JBJS. And they looked at 33 studies with over 3,000 patients. And they found no, no difference in infection rates from embolic events. Or, um, they found that there was no difference in overall mechanical axis uh, alignment. Um, and they found that 23% of the increase in uh, theatre time um, although that there was, there did appear to be a, a lower risk of malalignment in those that uh, had computer navigation, uh, but they found that the literature out there at that time, 2007, was uh, heterogeneous, and um, they went on to say that computer navigation knee was uh, of low benefit. Interestingly, if it's the same year. Um, Mason et al. produced a paper in Journal of Arthroplasty, uh, which used pretty much the same papers as was used in the previous um, uh, meta-analysis, and they had a completely different uh, conclusion. So they found there to be a, a strong, statistically significant difference in uh, mechanical axis um, from 9% to 32% uh, difference to, um, within uh, three degrees from the computer navigator to the conventional. And so they went on to say in their conclusion that there was a significant difference between coronal and sagittal alignment and they actually, there was quite a fight between them and uh, the previous authors. Uh, they wrote multiple times to each other about. Uh, uh, there's another meta-analysis 2010 by Novikov. Uh, this looked at papers between 1999 and 2008. They looked at 22 randomised controlled trials. Um, they found a significant difference also in computer-assisted uh, techniques where there was a, a, a significant improvement in alignment, uh, but they found there was no difference in uh, function in the short term. A lot of the articles that have been used in these meta-analysis don't talk about function, they just talk about alignment. So it's been, I think it's difficult for a lot of the meta-analysis to comment on, on function. Uh, but throughout all of them, there's been no difference in uh, knee function. This one here is at short term. We'll talk in a minute about some of the longer term studies. There is no difference. Um, Cheng et al. Uh, in 2011 did a, quite a large uh, meta-analysis um, of 41 randomised controlled trials. They also used um, and quasi randomised controlled trials. They had uh, over 4,000 um, 
uh, knees, um, and they also look mainly in alignment. Um, this, uh, as I said, unfortunately with the meta-analysis, they not only look at the um, uh, image-free but also CT and fluoroscopic. Um, they showed that uh, there was a significant difference in um, the greater than three degree malalignment when you compared um, computer navigation to conventional. For, uh, so in the coronal plane, for the sagittal plane as well, they found no difference in the axial rotation. Um, they found there to be a significant difference in operating time um, and that there was no real difference in uh, function um, between the two groups and that uh, the complications were fairly similar. And so they concluded that uh, computer assisted uh, navigation uh, improves mechanical leg axis and orientation but there's no benefit in the short term uh, with function. Uh, Bryn in 2011 did a, uh, 23, a study with 23 uh, studies of over, once again, over 4,000 knees, and they looked at um, uh, image-free um, computer navigation. They them for an 80% reduction uh, in malalignment in the, uh, in the mechanical um, axis uh, when comparing computer navigation to conventional. Uh, they didn't look at uh, sagittal alignment. They found there was an increased time and operating time and that the computer navigation came at a uh, considerable, uh, significant increase in cost. They went on to conclude that uh, imageless navigation uh, improves orientation um, and alignment, but uh, did not go on to talk about function. Um, so that's the meta-analyses, and they all seem to demonstrate improved alignment, but no improvement in function. Um, and no, when we get on here now, look at the SMAC view, no difference in um, uh, going on and having an early revision for failure. Uh, this this year there was a fairly large systematic review um, by Bernard and Barrick, and that looked at uh, 22 uh, randomized controlled trials in 2003-2011, and they also found once again, fewer outliers in the coronal plane, improved sagittal plane alignment, but once again, there was no improvement in clinical, functional, um, or survival between conventional and um, com uh, computer navigation. Um, all the studies in this uh, review showed an increase in operating time uh, and an increase in costs. Um, just quickly, looking a little bit further into this uh, review, three of the studies showed uh, no improvement in coronal sagittal uh, alignment, and as I said, there's a huge heterogeneity in the um, in the literature out there on this topic. Um, one study showed a various alignment after computer navigation. Uh, another showed that there was actually increased uh, pain um, uh, after using navigation uh, compared to uh, non-nav, and um, uh, only two studies look at the joint line that found no difference. Um, no study showed computer navigation to be cheaper. There was also a, uh, this year in the uh, ANZ Journal uh, Surgery Systematic Review, uh, which looked at 35 randomised controlled trials from, uh, this was uh, in, right back from 1997 to 2012. And uh, the issue, as I said, with the literature out there is that this such a small follow-up time. Uh, so 12 of them only had a one-year follow-up. Um, three of them had a five-year follow-up. They found no difference in infection. The revision rates were the same. Um, there was uh, uh, virtually no difference in embolic events. Um, four or five studies showed less blood loss in the um, in the computer-navigated group, but three or four studies showed that there was no drop in um, in HB. There was no fractures in any of the papers in this review. Um, and 1% of the uh, cases had to be converted from a um, computer navigation <coughs> to a uh, conventional knee. So once again, they found considerable variability in the papers, um, although they did find that um, uh, with computer navigation, you were uh, two times less likely to be to fall outside the three degrees um, uh, parameters. Um, there was no difference in knee range of motion, but this was only at six months. Um, no difference in knee society scores, um, up to eight years. No difference in uh, patient satisfaction, and no difference in um, in implant survival. 
looking at longer term studies, which unfortunately most of these are uh, non RCTs, but uh, once again they all seem to show that there's uh, improvement in coronal mainly, but also somewhat in sagittal and actual, um, alignment, um, but no improvement in function, quality of life, uh, satisfaction, or revision rates. Um, some of the eight year studies also demonstrate exactly that no functional uh, improvement. Uh, no change in revision rates, and um, uh, only one uh, demonstrated um, a, a change in uh, the knee society score, and that was Prof's um, uh, study. But that was also looking at um, being outside the three degree range, not being computer navigation. So, in in conclusion, looking at all that, what does it tell us? I think it tells us that um, computer navigation does improve alignment, especially in the coronal plane. Um, and does reduce um, the amount of uh, radiographic outliers um, in the coronal plane more so than the sagittal and even less so in the axial plane. But currently we have no evidence um, of improvement in function in revision rates or, uh, or survival. Um, and I guess why is that? And the literature shows us um, that if you do have better alignment, generally that should then go on to mean that you have better function, less pain, and in, uh, improve survival. It might be that we just don't have long enough data yet, that um, uh, most of the follow-up is only up to about eight years. Um, we may not be using the correct tools to measure function. There might be some other, uh, uh, and uh, might be some other tool that we need to use to show function. But I think in the future, there needs to be further um, trials looking at uh, longer follow-up looking specifically at function, because a lot of these uh, trials don't look at uh, function. Um, and the longer term stuff needs to be looking at uh, a revision rate. Mm -hmm.